Hey everyone, how's it going? Matthew Kadish here, author of the Earthman Jack Space Saga, coming at you today with a quick hot take on the most recent uh, Star Trek convention here in Las Vegas. Um, so for those of you who maybe don't follow Star Trek all that closely, the biggest Star Trek convention of the year is always the one held here in Las Vegas uh, at the end of the summer. And uh, we basically just had um, 2019 Star Trek Las Vegas uh, come and go. And uh, I got to attend the convention and meet up with some very interesting people and kind of get a sense of the, the crowd and the, where Star Trek's going and stuff like that. So if you're interested in Star Trek and when you want to hear my take on things, uh, this video is going to be all about that. If you're not too interested in it, then, you know, um, you might want to watch a different video. Anyway, uh, um, I've been no stranger to the big Star Trek convention, especially since I live out here in Vegas. So it's something that I go to quite regularly uh, year to year. And I've actually had a, a booth at the, at the vendors hall in the convention a number of times. And one of the things I just absolutely love about this Star Trek convention are the fans. Star Trek has the best fans of any um, science fiction franchise, in my opinion. Now, I haven't been to Star, Star Wars Celebration or anything like that, so I can't compare the two. But I just know that every time I've gone to uh, the Star Trek con convention here in Vegas, the quality of people that you meet is just absolutely amazing. Like, they're just very nice and fun and chill, and uh, they have a true passion for Trek. And not only Trek, but other stuff like Doctor Who, Supernatural, uh, science fiction in general. Uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of Earthman Jack fans from selling my books at these conventions where like, hey, they like Star Trek, they like my science fiction books. Um, and they're just very passionate people. And I've never had a bad experience with the fandom at these things. In fact, the fandom is usually the highlight of uh, these conventions because you meet so many amazing, cool, interesting people who share this uh, this interest in, in Star Trek with you, and that kind of sparks you know new friendships and uh, you know um, new networking uh, possibilities and all that good stuff. So the the fandom year to year is what really makes the Star Trek convention here in Vegas worth going to and meeting those people and getting to hang out with them and chit chat and stuff like that. And this year was no exception. I met some amazing people this year, particularly. The fact that there were a lot of YouTubers who came out uh, to Vegas to attend this convention this year. And I got to meet face to face with them and, and hang out and become friends. And it, it was it was absolutely fantastic. Um, big shout out to the Midnight's Edge guys, uh, Tom and Rob. If those of you who haven't subscribed to the Midnight's Edge channel, um, it'll be in the link in the description below. But Tom and Rob have been doing uh, Midnight's Edge After Dark. Unfortunately, Andre uh, couldn't come out from uh, Europe because, you know, of work responsibilities, I guess. But um, Tom and Rob came out, and they were at the convention, as was uh, uh, Mecca Random um, 47. Uh, I hope I'm getting that right. I just called her Mecca the whole time. Um, but she's, uh, she's also involved with Midnight's Edge After Dark, but she also has her own channel. So she's doing uh, really well, and she was a, a delight to meet. Um, we had uh, some guys from the Popcast um, out here as well. And uh, then there were, you know, um, like Nerd Roddick, uh, Jeff from World Class BSers, uh, Jesse Milestone, um, all types of, of, of people. Uh, and forgive me if I'm forgetting some. But uh, we all got together on Friday night at uh, the Millennium Fandom Bar downtown, which is this really cool kind of sci-fi themed geek bar. And uh, we all just kind of like hung out and chit chatted and, you know, got to know one another. And um, the Midnight's Edge guys rented this really pimp suite at the Rio where the convention's being held. And it was just this massive room. And so we'd congregate there uh, after the convention would let out for the day and just kind of like uh, sit around. They'd do some live streaming. We'd uh, just kind of like, you know, chit chat and, uh, and hang out and chill. And we'd go out and grab dinners together and stuff like that. And it was really great to get to meet these guys and get to know them personally. And it's kind of a surreal experience because I would see these guys, you know, on YouTube pretty much every day because, you know, they'd be posting videos and stuff like that. And to like get to meet them in person and hang out, it's kind of like, it's almost like meeting a celebrity in, in a weird way, which is kind of even more ironic considering that, uh, you, you know, there are actual celebrities at the Star Trek convention, <laughs> you know, like TV and movie celebrities. 
Um, but meeting the YouTubers was really kind of the highlight of the convention for me because these are guys who are just as passionate about this stuff as I am. And they're, uh, you know, I'm fans of theirs on, on YouTube and getting to know them like as people was, you know, a lot of fun. I made some good connections. Uh, we were even kind of joking that we uh, we thought that Doomcock was uh, at, at the convention attending incognito, uh, you know, kind of under the radar because he didn't want to be noticed. Um, unfortunately, Doomcock wasn't here. That was just uh, turned out to be a false alarm, but uh, it was still kind of fun to, to joke about it. So uh, let's get to the actual convention itself. I was actually very disappointed with the convention this year uh, for 2019, and I felt like uh Whoever was behind, you know, running things on the Star Trek front um, kind of dropped the ball. Now, let me just say that Creation Entertainment, the company that actually organizes the, the conventions and stuff like that, the officially licensed conventions, they're great. Um, I really liked, I really, I've always liked dealing with Creation. They, they, they're very professional people and they run things as best they can. Like when it comes to, you know, dealing with celebrities and autographs and pictures and stuff like that. It can often be like herding cats, like schedules change at the last minute. There's all types of stuff that, you know, you have to deal with. And, you know, dealing with that stuff, it's just, it's a nightmare. But Creation, for the, by and large, runs a tight ship. They, they Every year they put on this massive, logistically nightmarish uh, convention in Vegas, and they pull it off somehow. Now, uh, so this criticism is not directed at them. It's more directed towards the people at CBS and whoever were the shot callers who decided to drop all their big announcements at the San Diego Comic-Con as opposed to the Star Trek convention, which was just like a couple weeks after you know, Comic-Con. So this year, basically, what happened was at the San Diego Comic-Con, we got our uh, first full trailer for Star Trek Picard, which is a very highly anticipated Star Trek series that's upcoming on CBS All Access. In addition to our first looks at the Lower Decks animated um, show that is in development. And so a lot of this Star Trek news kind of hit at Comic-Con. And uh, I was like, well, hopefully they save something for the Star Trek convention. Otherwise, all these people who spend thousands of dollars to attend this convention, not only in travel, but to actually get tickets to go to the convention... Uh, have something exciting that they can, you know, look forward to at the convention itself. And that was not the case. Uh, they um, CBS totally blew their load at Comic-Con and left absolutely nothing for the Star Trek convention. There were no major announcements. There were no big insights. And I think that if they had just kind of had a, a small presence at Comic-Con and didn't make any big announcements, but save their big announcements for the Star Trek convention, they probably would have gotten a lot more coverage because the Star Trek stuff was kind of buried among like a bunch of other things coming out of Comic-Con, especially on the Marvel end of things. So, um, you know, if they had dropped the Picard trailer here at, at the Star Trek convention, it would have gotten way more attention. People's heads would have exploded. Like it would have been the talk of the convention. Uh, people would have been doing um, all types of videos about it. It would have been like a huge surprise. It would have gotten way, way, way more coverage than it did when it was released at uh, at Comic-Con. Same thing with Lower Decks. If they had like revealed some of the Lower Decks stuff here instead of at Comic-Con, uh, there would have been a lot more, um, you know, kind of hype around it, I think. So I feel like that was a big mistake. And the energy at the convention this year was just kind of off. Uh, like I, I was there for the 50th anniversary of Star Trek and also the 25th anniversary of The Next Generation. And those years, the convention was just absolutely huge. There, there were so many people there. There was so much ex excitement. Like there, there were interesting panels going on. There was all types of cool stuff going on. This year, it felt very um, kind of downplayed almost. Uh, it didn't feel as as crowded as it normally does. Um, it felt almost sleepy. All of the panels that were going on weren't very interesting. Um, uh, in fact, I heard a lot of people complaining about how lackluster, you know, a lot of these panels were. And there weren't any, like, real big announcements to get excited about. Like, when they announced the Picard trailer, or the Picard series, uh, I believe it was last year, that was... That was huge. That got all types of people excited. And this year, there was really nothing to get excited about because we already got excited about it a couple weeks earlier due to the Comic-Con announcements. So that 
was kind of disappointing. I feel like that kind of put a, a damper on the overall convention experience. Now, there were some interesting things that happened during the convention, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, it was just a very low energy kind of meh experience this year. Um, now, that being said, uh, I will say that Star Trek Discovery had a very big showing at the convention. And I was actually very surprised to see how, how many people were there who actually like and support Star Trek Discovery, especially a lot of younger kind of Trek fans seem to be on the, the Star Trek Discovery train. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about Star Trek Discovery, but it's personally not my favorite Trek show. In fact, it, uh, I feel like the first two seasons, uh, could you could argue that Discovery is just Trek in name only. It's just a generic sci-fi show with the Star Trek label attached to it. And I feel like if it were to not be Star Trek, um, the show would probably be a lot better because, it, you know, it would just be like this decent kind of uh, adult oriented, you know, science fiction show. Uh, but because it's Star Trek, it, it kind of falls short of achieving the greatness of some of the other uh, Star Trek uh, shows. But there was a lot of support for it at the convention, which I guess isn't surprising considering, you know, the people who go to these conventions are like the hardest of the hardcore fans, especially the ones here in uh, Las Vegas where they, you know, come out for the big show when all the celebrities are going to be out here. Um, but it was interesting to see there were a lot of, of actors from Discovery uh, at the show um, doing autographs and, and photo signings. And one of the highlights of the convention, at least for me, was this panel where both um, Anson Mount, who plays Captain Pike on season two of Discovery, uh, he was up on stage and he was joined by Jason Isaacs, who played Captain Lorca in season one of Discovery. So the, the two big Discovery captains up on stage, um, you know, together for the first time. And that was a lot of fun to get to see because Anson Mount, just as a person, he's, he's a very kind of um, uh, down to earth, straight shooting guy. Like he just seems like a very cool, laid back dude. And, uh, you know, he he showed up early at the convention. He uh, took time to like, kind of hang out and chit chat with fans. He was very approachable. Very nice guy. Everyone loved him, and rightly so. Um, and Jason Isaacs, by contrast, he was a lot more boisterous and charismatic and funny and entertaining. Like, you can tell, like, you know, he's got a, a stage background because he's just great, you know, up live on stage. And when he wasn't espousing pol political stuff, because he, he is a very political guy, um, he was he was great, you know. Um, I, I just feel like whenever actors start preaching politics, it kind of detracts from the entertainment value because it's you start kind of dividing people in the audience based off of like what they believe politically. So Jason Isaacs kind of you know um, kind of started dropping some of that stuff, but overall he was very entertaining and getting to see him up on stage with Anson Mount. Because they had never met before this moment. This was actually their very first meeting together up on stage live. And it was interesting to get to see them kind of get to know each other on stage and kind of banter back and forth and stuff like that. So it, it was a lot of fun uh, to see that. And I actually got some interesting, some interesting takes from them. Uh, so first of all, it does seem very likely that we're going to eventually get a Captain Pike spinoff. Um, with Anson Mount, um, you know, and uh, Rebecca Romaine and, and stuff like that. I mean, they already have the sets built. They have these very popular uh, characters with the fans. Like, the fans really responded to Captain Pike in Season 2 of Discovery. So I have no doubt that they're probably going to give him his own show eventually. But one of the, the things I picked up on, which I found very fascinating, was that Jason Isaacs was kind of hinting that Captain Lorca might be getting his own show. And there's no big proof of that, but the, you know, spoilers for those of you who have who've seen who haven't seen Discovery. Um, the Captain Lorca in season one of Discovery was actually the mirror universe version of Captain Lorca. So the Prime Universe version is still out there. And so there's the potential to bring back the Prime Lorca and create a show around him. And Jason Isaacs uh, definitely said that he would be down for returning to the character because he really loved the experience. And um, I think that uh, it, it's a good possibility that they could actually do that because he is a, you know, a good enough actor 
And his other show, The OA, just got canceled by Netflix. So he's got an opening in his schedule. So it's definitely something that they could potentially do. Um, so that was kind of uh, one of the, the big drops that I found very interesting uh, at the convention was that we could be getting a Captain Lorca spinoff at some point. Now, again, that's totally, totally speculation on my part, so don't hold me to that. But that's one of my predictions going forward is we might see a Lorca show. But I, I definitely hope that we get to see a, a Captain Pike show as well. And uh, the uh, panels for the Picard stuff were kind of lackluster. They had one where Jonathan Frakes got up on stage with uh, Jerry Ryan and this other actor who's, who's in the Picard show. Uh, I don't remember his name, but there, there were no big announcements to come out of it. Um, you know, they're, they're very tight lipped. They're still shooting the, the, the series right now. So there were no, no big revelations on that other than the fact that Brent Spiner kind of came out and said that he's only in one episode of Picard. So all the stuff in the trailer that we see with data, um, it's probably from the, uh, from the pilot episode of, of the series. And, you know, so he, he's not, he doesn't play a role throughout it. And he did kind of confirm that the, the data that we see in the Picard trailer is data. It's not before any of this other stuff. So that was kind of interesting. But um, everyone on stage had really great things to say about uh, Alex Kurtzman. So there are a lot of people out there who are kind of down on Alex Kurtzman for the current state of Star Trek. When in reality, um, we haven't, I don't personally believe we've actually seen what Alex Kurtzman is bringing to the table in terms of Star Trek, yeah, he's, he's developing the Picard show, he's developing Lower Decks, he's developed all these things, but the problems with Discovery were actually an extension of the previous showrunners, Harbertsburg and, um, and uh, Goldman, and Les Moonves, who used to run CBS, and he was the one who was actually forcing a lot of the more controversial decisions on that show. So I feel like... Um, Kurtzman's kind of getting a little bit of a bad rap right now. Um, we haven't really seen what a pure Kurtzman, 100% Kurtzman type show is going to be. Yes, he had some influence on uh, Discovery Season 2, but you know that show had already been uh, messed up by the point he got in there. So I'm kind of interested to see what Kurtzman, like what 100% Kurtzman is going to bring to the table in terms of uh, Star Trek. So the Picard stuff looks pretty good so far, but I'm going to have to wait to see like how the show actually... Uh, ends up playing out before I start judging whether or not I think Kurtzman is ruining Star Trek or not. So, uh, but there was a lot of support for Kurtzman up on stage. Uh, a lot of the fans seem to be happy with how Discovery is doing and the, the current state of Star Trek. So there, there's a lot of optimism at the convention, even though I know there are a lot of people out there who are kind of down on Star Trek at the moment because they don't like the, what was done with the Discovery. And rightly so. I would tend to agree with those people. But at the same time, I'm, I guess I'm being uh, childishly naive and optimistic that things are going to get better, especially now that Les Moonves isn't there to mess things up because he was really the, the driving factor in all the mistakes that Discovery made in its first season. So I'm hoping that things are going to get good. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, overall, the convention was just kind of kind of a disappointment this year, but it was great to get to meet the people and hang out with the fans and uh, get to listen to some of the celebrities talk about their time on the show. In fact, I heard that Kate Mulgrew, you know, she kind of had the, this big kerfluffle lately where, you know, she called uh, Star Trek sexist or something like that. And uh, but she was uh, very welcome on the stage. She got up there and kind of uh, preached about diversity and stuff like that for a little bit. But from what I understand, apparently Kate Mulgrew has been very distant from her fellow Voyager cast members for a number of years. And this year she kind of reached out to them and got up on stage and surprised them when they were doing their panel. And so like the the rank and file cast members of Voyager were kind of surprised uh, to see that she was actually kind of coming around. I think, you know, I'm not a big fan of Kate Mulgrew's. I think that she's kind of um, jockeying for uh, some type of comeback role in like a future Star Trek series or something like that. I, I don't know exactly, but it just seems weird that all of a sudden she's had this about face in terms of, you know, actually being nice to her cast members. Uh, for those of you who don't know, her and Jerry Ryan did not get along on set when they were shooting Voyager. So, um, you know, uh, Kate Mulgrew has this long history of just kind of looking, you know, thumbing her nose, looking down upon her co-stars and stuff like that. And she's had a little bit of a resurgence with Orange is the New Black with her character on there. But, um, you know, Star Trek is really the thing that she's most well known for, probably. 
Uh, so it was interesting to see her kind of come around and, and you know, start being nicer to, to her cast members this time around. So we'll see what happens with that. But long story short, uh, Star Trek 2009 here in, or 2019 <laughs> here in Las Vegas was um, kind of a lackluster showing. Hopefully next year will be better and hopefully they learn their lesson this year to not blow everything at Comic-Con, save some for the Star Trek convention because it's going to get way more coverage if you, if you do it that way. And the people who are there are so passionate that they're going to, you know, just kind of go crazy over it and stuff like that. So uh, what do you guys think about the current state of Star Trek? Uh, you know, did you attend the Star Trek convention? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more movie, TV, and entertainment news. This is Matthew Kadish. I'll catch you guys in the next video.